Hey guys, it's always a big kajinju, and a welcome to the Appalachia Bees. Have you seen these? Did you see it? Got a three pack for you today. Some interesting ones, some thought provoking ones. Let me know down below what you think, but all three of these kind of made me go, oh, ah. So I'm put them all three together and pressed go on the camera. I'll get you up to date and I want to hear what you have to say. So buckle up, here we go. This bunch of ooh, fun is brought to you by Maxim Defense. I usually put stuff right there. I can't do it. They got some really, really good stuff. Go find them. I can't even say the name of the website. YouTube gets really upset. M-A-X-I-M, -M, Maxim Defense. There's no link. I'm not putting a link down there. No way. You go find them. I dug through the whole website today and it's really, really good. I found a few things that I went, ooh, that looks real good. So ready, set, go. Go check them out. Maxim Defense, they're supporting this today. I'm sending y'all over there. Go crush it. I'm not putting it on my channel. No way. Big thank you to the folks at MaximDefense.com. <laughs> you people, thank you for every oh, thumbs up. All right, did you see? Ready, set, go. All right, did you see this? Representative Jim, Jim Clyburn, he is the House Majority Whip, Democrat out of South Carolina, big shocker. He compared uh, Rudy Tootie ownership to slavery. He played the card. He compared it to slavery. You know, his, one of his points is that, hey, just because something is legal doesn't make it right. I like that point. There's a lot of things down through human history that were within the law. The Nazi party was in the law at the time. It's an inter interesting point. I'm not totally against that, but he's like, okay, well, you know, slavery was legal at one point, and now they, and he compared that to gun ownership. The part of the, of course he did. Like, you know, at that point, okay, he's a Democrat from South Carolina. This is what he's going to do. This is the card he's going to play. He's a nitwit, a career politician, what we know today as a criminal. So Jim Clyburn says all that stuff, and he's proposing, because all this narrative right now, he's proposing an AW ban, assault weapons ban, big time. But here's the part of the story that I really, that really, really got my attention. So he's talking about all this stuff, and he just stopped, and he goes, hey, and by the way, by the way, nobody wants to take anybody's guns away. Would they really do that? Would they really just get in front of cameras and lie? In a press conference about taking your rights away, he goes, hey, nobody's trying to take your rights away. Next. All right. Did you see Chicago? This is interesting. And, and sometimes when we talk about Chicago, too often our side just dismisses it and goes, yeah, that's Chicago. We need to pay attention to this, but for a different reason. Watch this. All right. So two and a half years, two and a half years ago, there was a watchdog group took a look at something they do in Chicago. The Chicago police have a list of gang members or known associates, bad people. And there's a lot of people on this list, 135,000 of their own citizens. I know some of y'all don't like the word citizens, but you understand what I'm saying. 135,000 Chicagoans are on this list. This watchdog firm looked at the list and said the entire database was riddled with errors and was ripe for abuse and disproportionately targeted some groups. And they said, no way, Jose. But it looked like they did some pretty good research and said, nope. The list is flawed and flogged big time. Now, it turns out they're still using the list to target who they go after. Why? C catch this. They are going after, they are trying to give officers a chance to, quote, get ahead of the next crime. Get ahead of the next crime. That was a unit. The pre-crime unit. Tom Cruise, we already dealt with that there. So they're trying to be Nostradamus in using this list. All right, it's too easy to go, Boop, Chicago, of course they're doing nonsense. Well, they are, they always are. But remember, in recent days, you and I have been added to a lot of lists. They went after libertarians last week and saying that they're a hate group. This is what they do. This is what they did in 1936, and it's what they're doing in 2022. A flawed list, full of errors, still using it, Chicago. You and I are on a lot of different lists, but this is this is a tactic of the left, and that's why we watch it and talk about it. Next. All right, did you see this? This is a real short one. The Red State has an article this week that says, it came out today, the left thinks 
the right doesn't want black people to have guns, dot, 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 L-O-L. And he does some research here. It's pretty well, pretty well researched. Brandon Morris wrote that, that there is a population of the left, and they really think that the right's just trying to keep guns out of the hands of black people. LOL. Here is my anecdotal evidence. This is my experience. I really, in a lot of ways, came into this industry the really, like, like not just locally and with my own group, but nationally. So I got cross-pollinated big time beginning about six years ago. Six years ago this week. My cross-pollination le exponentially leveled up. So I really started hanging out with guys from all over the place. And I, and I mean this, and I've said this before, this is the most inclusive group I have ever been a part of. We don't give a rat's poot tootie what you look like. The 2A is for everybody. We don't care who, if it's a minority. What does that have to do with anything? I find it a very inclusive group. And so to that, I also say, and I echo Mr. Morse, Brandon Morse, L-O-L, but that's what they think about you and I. You and me, us people, you people, you people. Let me know what you think. I'll be here again tomorrow. See y'all soon. Bye.